Really pleased to have been joined by Camilla Nabieva of the Climate Change Media Partnership. And uh, I know that you're covering these talks um, for Central Asia uh, from a Central Asian perspective. So I'm um, looking forward to, to finding out a little bit about uh, how you're trying to communicate what's going on here back, back home. But first of all, um, I wanted to ask, why are you here? How are you here? What's the Climate Change Media Partnership? Well, I'm thanks to this organization, which um, the partnership includes three big uh, uh, media companies and um, NGOs. That is Internews, Panas, and Earth Journalism Network. Um, and their aim is to bring um, journalists from the de developing world and give them an opportunity to um, get an insight on the climate change talks and um, cover those issues um, from here um, to their home countries. So it's a great opportunity because um, in most of the countries, um, well, and I'm speaking from a Central Asian perspective, um, th there is often not, not enough opportunity for journalists to, to be able to come to these talks and to, to, to be covering important issues uh, back home. So I'm, I'm one of those lucky ones who uh, got this opportunity. And for me it's very important because um, at the moment in Central Asia, um, different countries have different level of um, activity um, in these talks. Well, if we're, if we're talking about, for example, uh, my home country, um, at the moment there's not enough coverage. Uh, Uzbekistan? That, that is yeah. Uzbekistan, yeah. But um, other countries like Kazakhstan and Tajikistan, they're, they're trying to become more involved and um, you can see already that they have um, established positions and they're trying to promote their interests. Um, there, there was uh, recently an initiative from Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, for example, to form a group of um, mountainous landlocked countries uh, together with Armenia. It's a very small group, but there is but growing potential for this group to promote um, their interests together and to be heard uh, during the talks. So I'm, I'm very interested in how far they will go um, and whether this will be a very successful initiative. Um, and, and, and so how do you um, try and communicate the talks back to people at home? Because it's such a complicated process here with acronyms and, and even, even when you're in the thick of it, or maybe sometimes because we're in the thick of it, it can be so difficult to kind of see what's happening. So how do you try and, how do you try and communicate that back? back? Well, you, you have to keep in mind, yeah, that people um, that are reading about those talks, they don't want to be bothered by all these uh, <laughs> difficult acronyms. And they can't, I mean, for me as a journalist who, who, who has been uh, trying to grasp this enormous flow of information and about different, different um, complex issues and meetings on ministeri ministerial level, working groups level, this is very difficult to grasp. So I think journalists have this um, aim to actually process this information and understand what is more important and what is the main outcome, what are the main um, um, issues that will matter in their home country. So I'm trying to uh, find information or important issues that can be translated into uh, everyday um, experience of people and explain why these talks are important. Say, um, in Central Asia we have a very important and burning issue of um, scarcity of water resources because of uh, uh, climate change. So I'm trying to look at the issues and um, discussions about water and um, yeah, communicate some of the important outcomes in this respect back, back to the region. And so you've been following the talks here. Like, what's your perception of, of, of the progress and, and, and as far as Central Asia is con concerned and the countries that, that have interests there, are they, are they lobbying, are they working hard, are they being successful? Um, as I've said, it's, it's starting to grow um, very slowly, but I think there's a great potential. Um, we have uh, potential not only um, yeah, to be more actively involved in the discussions that are concerning adaptation, um, but also we have good potential for mitigation, you know, to, to be involved in some of the measures um, that could um, reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So I think probably not in this particular uh, climate talks and probably not even in South Africa, but they will get this, you know, um, 
I mean, as I see it from the processes now, they're, they're already um, becoming more active. And I think the more journalists cover those issues, the more they talk with delegations, NGOs, um, the more chances there are that um, the countries themselves will realize, especially on the political level, that these issues matter and um, people back at home, back in the region, are interested and want to know more and want to, you know, to, to, to see some outcome. And they'll become more active in... in so it, 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 it's a circle, it's all interrelated. You have to communicate how these talks uh, shape or influence their lives or could potentially influence their lives and then so that the interest from people grows and makes the political leaders um, want to be involved more to to yeah to reach more visible results that could again back um, uh, yeah have some effect on their everyday lives it's really fascinating to, to kind of see how it works in your mind and how you hope to kind of kind of generate some kind of movement at, at, at a political level back home through your reporting. Um, what, 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 kind of, what, what do you hope to, to be saying at the end of this week? You've been following the talks. What, what's your story? What's your write-up going to be on, uh, on Friday or Saturday, do you think? Um, well, um, that would be nice to incorporate some of the things that I've learned and I've been trying to discuss many things with, as I've said, delegations and NGOs to incom incorporate those expectations from the talks with the things that um, uh, the countries in our regions could actually do. So to incorporate these expectations from the talks with actual uh, potential for um, for being more involved in them. So if I could incorporate this with a more, with a wider picture of what is happening here, and as we know, I mean, uh, probably from, yeah, like you probably talked to many people that not many people are very um, hopeful about the uh, outcome for this particular talks. Um, but if you incorporate those two, I think, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Maybe that's a nice positive message to, to leave it uh, with. So Camilla, I'll just say thank you very much for joining me. It's uh, really interesting to talk to you.